So follow through and overlap or drag and overlap. Up till now, we've been dealing with the ball, just a single object. There's, there's really, um, it can't really get much simpler than the ball, but obviously we're going to be animating far more complicated characters, uh, objects, all sorts of things that are more than just one piece, more than just the one sphere. We're going to get into things that are connected to each other. So at the heart of drag and overlap, it's dealing with chains and connected objects is kind of a, a, a very broad generic way of, of describing what could be a whole host of things uh, when it comes to animation. But there are chains all over the place, all over the body, for example. The body is a whole series of chains connected to each other. Well, first let's just take a look at a chain, a bunch of links connected together. Individual objects, each link is its own individual object, but they're connected to each other. But they can move somewhat independently, but they can't escape each other. Well, what else might be a chain? Well, say we have the shoulder, and we've got the elbow, and coming down we've got the forearm, the wrist, the palm, the fingers, more fingers. So we have one bone connected to another bone, connected to a smaller 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 bone. So an arm is a chain, but what's the arm attached to? Well, it's attached to your shoulder, which is attached to your spine. So here we got the pelvis. And then we got the first vertebrae, second vertebrae, maybe a third vertebrae. Then we get into the rib cage. The rib cage is solid, so that kind of counts as one big link. So here we got one, one link, two links, three links, four links, another link. This connects directly into the neck. That connects into the head. A chain starting at the pelvis and going up. So that's a chain. The spine is a chain. The neck is a chain. The arm is a chain. The leg is a chain. Um, there's chains everywhere. If you're dealing with creatures, you might have a tail. The tail is just a chain, right? Uh, if they have antenna, the antenna are chains. Uh, chains are everywhere. And it doesn't even need to just be one character. It could be multiple characters connected to each other. A guy hanging on to a rope with another character hanging on to his foot, hanging off of a ledge. That's a chain now of characters. That guy's hand is connected to his shoulder, to his arm, goes to his shoulder, to his spine, down his leg, and then to the other person's hand. Now they're all connected and the, the motion of one affects the motion of what uh, comes next in the chain. So follow through or overlap and drag really deals with how one object's motion is influencing the other objects in this connected chain. Now, now drag and overlap can be a very tricky and seemingly very daunting aspect of animation. It's, it comes up all the time. It seems like it should be easy, but it's actually kind of quite difficult to get it to look right. We're going to finally be able to, to loosen up uh, objects that, you know, without it would feel stiff and rigid. Things don't move all together. There's this, again, drag aspect to it. So let's just take a very simple example. So here we've got a little platform, and it's going to move from point A to our A position, and it's going to come across the screen, and it's going to come to a stop over here. So we got our A pose and our B pose. Okay. So it's a simple platform, nothing to it, right? The platform with this chain and object hanging at the end of it from point A to point B. Now, in Maya, that's just going to give us, you know, this thing is going to hang straight down all the time. Just, so it's going to point down as it slides across and it's going to be stiff and rigid and totally unappealing and not what we're after at all. But what we do want is this feeling of drag. And at the heart of that is kind of the idea of inertia. We've talked about inertia uh, a bunch up till now with the bouncing balls. The speed that they're rolling at, you know, and the forward momentum and the, you know, that wants to keep them moving forward or if they're at rest and they get bumped, you gotta kind of break that 
desire to stay still and not get into motion. That same idea is at work in the chain. As we start moving from A to B, we're going this way. So as the, the platform starts moving, its motion is communicated and transferred into the chain because the chain is attached to it. So the platform starts moving and it says, hey, we're going this way. And the top of the chain gets the message almost right away. But it has to pass that message on. And it says to the next link, hey, we're going this way. And that one says to the next link, hey, we're going this way. And that one passes the message on and that one passes the message on. So by the time it gets down to the very bottom, there's a, there's a delay, right? Because it's had to go through all these steps in between. So rather than it just hanging straight down, now we have an offset. It's dragging behind, right? So this is the drag. The bottom of the chain still just thinks that it wants to stay still, but the top of the chain starts moving and it has to wait until that motion gets all the way down to the bottom before that one realizes like, oh, I gotta go with the rest of the game. So we now have this offset. Now, as the platform comes to a stop, again, we have that idea of inertia. Now the chain is moving. It's attached to the platform, but it's moving through space. So it has kind of its own desire now to move, continue moving forward. So when the platform comes to a stop, the chain just wants to keep going. Inertia says, no, objects moving just kind of keep moving. It wants to continue towards the right. So we get this opposite sort of effect at the other end as the inertia keeps the chain moving. And this is the overlap. So the bottom is now overlapping with what's going on up top. So that inertia carries this forward, but it can't go very far because they're all attached to each other. So it stops it and prevents it from just sailing forward. You know, if we've all kind of swung you know, if you're carrying a heavy grocery bag, if you're swinging it at your side, you feel it kind of tug as it gets towards sort of the extreme of the swing because it wants to keep going forward, but your arm is holding onto it and it prevents it from doing that. And then our good friend gravity pulls the, the bag, you know, down. So it begins to fall down and it swings back in the other direction and its momentum carries it back a certain distance and then it can't go any further and it stops and gravity accelerates it back down to the ground and it swings back in the other direction. So we get this swinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And each time, just like the bounce in the bouncing ball, we start losing energy. So each swing gets a little bit lower, and a little bit closer to the chain's kind of preferred position, which is straight up and down, aligned with gravity, very neutral position doesn't take any effort to kind of line itself up like that way. So this back and forth, back and forth pendulum motion, that's the overlap. The, the platform stops, it comes swinging in, but underneath we get this, you know, swinging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, as the train tries to work out all of that energy until it, it can finally come to a rest. So we have this drag, element and we have the overlap letting the inertia carry it through and then slowly working out all of that energy as the limit of the chain's length and gravity sort of prevent it from continuing and it's forced to swing back and forth back and forth back and forth so those are the two elements the drag and the overlap and again this can show up in all sorts of different scenarios. Now going back to the idea of the arm as a chain, say you're animating a character walking through space and the arm is here, you know, starting back here, and it's gonna swing forward. The same sort of thing is gonna be at work as you go somewhere in between these two. That idea that the arm will be kind of dragging behind. We're gonna get this drag action. And that helps the arm feel loose, you know, where the wrist is sort of delayed from the forearm. And the forearm is a little bit delayed from the upper arm, which is a little bit delayed from what the shoulder might be doing or what the, how the chest might be rotating or the up and down of the hips or the, the forward movement. We get this drag and we would also have the overlap at the other end. So 
this idea, again, it's not just restricted to an inanimate chain. It shows up everywhere. And as we progress through the later assignments, you're going to see how this really does come in all over the place. And it's not even restrained to just the, the chains. It might be elements on the character's face as they move up quickly. You might drag the eyebrows and then because the brows are attached to the face, so you drag them and then they might overlap a little bit, making the face feel looser. It could be uh, you know, the same sort of thing with the eyelids or the nose or the mouth. Um, you can do it with all these elements all over the face. It's gonna happen with the characters if they have hair, clothing, all these things that are influenced by another object's motion. You know, the clothes are influenced by the body's movement underneath, but they're not rigidly attached. There's a little bit of looseness, there's a little bit of separation. Same with the hair, you know, your hair doesn't follow along perfectly, it drags, it sways, 